Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me here, Santeri. And um, thank you for this great stage. I mean, it's impressive. So today I will speak about uniting our strength and um, where I come from. I come from another tiny country with a weird language. Um, this is the Network for Excellent Realities, Virtual Switzerland. We have been founded firstly by the government, uh, main, mainly the, the agency for the promotion of innovation called InnoSwiss for the part 2017 and 2020. So we had a launch with public funding. And what we're doing is we are a not-for-profit association promoting and fostering integration, development, tech transfer of extended realities in Switzerland. You may know of a few success stories, perhaps. I don't know if any of you knows a, a Swiss X-Star company. Nobody? Dreamscape Immersive. Anybody knows Dreamscape Immersive? Actually, this is a big LBVR company. It's now, um, it uses the tech developed in, Gen in Geneva by the president of um, Virtual Switzerland, but it's now based in Los Angeles, and it, it has been um, also funded by Steven Spielberg and Warner and Fox, and so they, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't have time for me anymore. So I don't see my presidents, but they're doing great things with um, Men in Black and Harry Potter and the likes. And an, another one, we have a unicorn called Mind Maze. I don't know if you've heard of it. Another star um, studded uh, startup because Leonardo DiCaprio invested in it. So I don't know why all these people come and, and pick our little gems in Switzerland. So what we do is, just like every cluster around, we provide consulting, we provide services, but we do this now um, totally independently since we are not publicly funded anymore. We also try to collide great minds and talents. I facilitate contacts, consortium building, project creation, all of the, well, every day. And um, of, of course, we try to connect people. And last week, where I lost my voice, was the Geneva International Film Festival with its uh, Geneva Digital Market. And it's actually the broadest and best selection of um, immersive artworks. It showcased 40 works. So today I'm going to speak about uniting the XR community. And you would think, okay, so why, um, why would I, a, a Swiss girl, speak about uniting the European community? Because <laughs> I, found, I found a reason. The World Wide Web was funded in Geneva in 1989. Yeah, that's a good excuse. I know it wasn't even a Swiss scientist, it was an English computer scientist. But um, nevertheless, it means that we're part of this big scientific, innovative, um, historical stream of thoughts. And um, going back to it, now it led me to XR for Europe with Santeri. And, the, and um, um, this is how I got to, to learn about the excellent Helsinki Cent XR Center. So, the um, XR for Europe organization is actually the follow-up. It, it, it's, it's followed the same type of um, funding as we did in, at Virtual Switzerland. So, it was firstly funded by the Euro com European Commission as part of the H2020 program, and now it's on its own. And so, we rebranded it as funding members, and called it instead of XR for all, we called it XR for Europe, which makes sense. This is the United European Network for XR Professionals, and I just explained what it was all about. So, speaking of ecosystem growth, right, because the idea is to really generate this kind of impetus and momentum and to have power together. So like I did in Switzerland with my tiny 
ecosystem, it seems tiny, but actually, despite the fact that it has really massive XR successes, it's also a very difficult federal, um, it's a confederation, just like the European um, Union is also a, a confederation in, of some sort. So, and plus it has four languages, three that are really spoken, um, at least that are formally spoken. And so it's not that easy to cross bridges between the French-speaking part and the German-speaking part. And so we su succeeded in doing so by going back and forth and really trying to put these two regions together um, on, on projects. You know, sometimes you hear of something of a deer and you notice that there is exactly the same idea brewing down in the Italian speaking part. So you're like, oh, but guys, don't, you know, do it twice and just bring your, join your strength. And that's what we do. And um, this is why I wanted to speak a bit about how to grow this ecosystem. And a lot of it, at first is evangelization or um, education, if you want, in a, in a certain sense. It's about educating politicians, about educating the industry, because um, at least in my country, they're very skittish about this XR technology. They are afraid of it. They don't want to spend too much money on the wrong head um, hardware and often they're a bit curious they step back they wait and then once it's been very successful elsewhere normally in france or germany then they say oh yeah why not you know it's been a big a big hit over there um there is this lobbying part just as i said um to knock uh, <laughs> to knock on doors and say listen you know we need to speak about what's coming up and this is um, the immersive technologies are here to stay with us, as we understood today. It's not going anywhere. It's just going to grow and evolve and, and probably um, take some space in our life, just as our little device that we have in our pockets have uh, since 2007. So it's, it's really also an acculturation process that we do. And of course, lots of public relations like today and I'm happy to do this, so promotional presence, um, to have platforms and channels, and what we do with XR for Europe, we really want to solve problems and listen to the market needs. So, for example, one of the, the um, platforms that we will put at the agenda for 2022 is this venture, the, the venture and investor side linked to very good industrial uh, uh, and you know projects with high potential so scalable projects that we curate and we um we we bring experts together to really look at the applications and then these people go to the investors and they say i believe in this because of a b c x y Z, because most of the time, people, um, either the, the, the governmental bodies funding and giving grants for XR have no clue about the technology. I mean, we were, our experts are at, at Virtual Switzerland when we were sponsored by InnoSwiss. I shouldn't be saying that, but the third year we noticed that um, only one of the four around the table had ever put on a headset so it was a bit distressing and we were you know they, they were giving they were the ones deciding if we had done okay in our evangelization and in our outreach so there is a lot of, of um, we need to create and, and to increase the credibility of XR technologies, because for now, those who haven't had headsets on, and here we all speak the same language, but often when we go outside, um, you know, the, the XR community, people are not at all familiar with the technology and they ask, you know, basic questions. Will this technology take away my job, for example? And this is just like, you know, booksellers in the, in the when the internet arrived, they said, well, I'm, I'm going to lose my shop 
and this is this hasn't happened. It's a tool. So we need to clarify this um, to the general public as well. So by creating meetups, for example, by having people meet, it can be meetups, virtual meetups now that we have those tools. This is excellent. And of course, the idea is also to have a certain business intelligence. And to, um, with Virtual Switzerland, we have this tech watch that we put together, but there are many people doing this. So what we're thinking also for EXA for Europe, it's putting this together and perhaps why not have somebody, hello sponsors, um, giving money for a white paper that would cover the entire European um, map because we are very fragmented right now at the east of Europe, as you as you well uh, as you well know, there is a, a strong um, th th there is a, a, a strong industry of development. So the, the those who actually write the codes and are at the backbone of the technology. And then at the Western side of Europe, you have mostly the creative industries, which we will go back to later. So what's the European um, Unique Selling Proposal? When we look at ourselves, like I said, there is not this North and South divide, although there is a bit, but mostly this Western Eastern divide. So we are very creative. We are not as commercial as the United States. We don't um, have a very strong branding like Canada. But when I went to Hub Montreal, I was really expecting to be wowed. And of course I was. Felix and, and Paul, they do magical uh, experiences. But all in all, I was not that enthused. I mean, I was, I thought, okay, yeah, we can compete. We're not that bad, you know? And um, this is, uh, I think we have the best head, head, uh, headsets, obviously. I cannot say anything different, but it's true. Vario. And uh, there is this Lynx headset coming up that is made in France. Uh, we have Cyril, that is a Swiss company that does the optics. Um, and, and there are, you know, there, there, we have very strong um, universities as well, and those are public universities. And the big difference with America, where you have those very powerful but private universities, is that here it, it gives back in a different way. So um, those coming out of universities, they start startups, perhaps the money will be... Um, channeled into helping them more. So we do have USP. And as I wanted to remind you, because my, my um, academic background is in international relations, actually the values upon which the Euro European Union was funded is human dignity, freedom, democracy, the equality that is enshrined in the Treaty of Rome in 1957, and the rule of law. And when we speak of the rule of law, we have the protection of personal data. And this is a very, very strong point. And right now, everybody is trying to just um, safeguard their own data because they know it's going to be massive power. For example, right now in Switzerland, we are, at the, um, we are part of this initiative, but a, a folks initiative, so I mean a political initiative, something you can vote and that can go up to the government and then be enshrined in the law, um, about a Swiss data sovereignty. So sovereignty is central to what we are now building with these technologies. And I think that in Europe, with our GDPR, which is kind of, um, it, it's not really working, but we can have a very sovereign data protection. Um, it, it, it could become a united, something very, an agency of some sort that does that um, a bit more f in a flexible way and also in a very strong um, regulatory way. So what we also forget is that the um, EU was awarded the Nobel Pre Peace Prize. And um, this is for advancing the cause of peace, reconciliation, democracy, and human rights. So 
knowing this, I mean, we have something very powerful in our hands because if you combine the metaverse or this simulacrum, as we this is simulacrum, by the way, it comes from the art world and it's it um, describes the metaverse, what we call metaverse, but in in the art segment. So the simulacrum and, and these very powerful um, causes, then we can really create something that could have a, a, a USP of its own because the US and Northern America would say they will go more commercial, I guess. And anyway, uh, we don't trust the... <laughs> we, don't tr we, don't, we, we don't trust the Far East. So um, th th there is a regulatory problem with them. Not the Indian, though, because um, while I was visiting the research outpost, the Swiss research outpost called Swissnex in India, in Bangalore, I visited several companies there and I thought, wow, you know, they, they've all been educated in the West, so they all speak the same language, they think the same way. So it's very easy to work with. I don't, I don't, I don't say that we should all be, you know, on the same wavelength. I'm just saying it makes collaboration more easily, easy. And then um, I thought, wow, they have great teams, and the work they were doing was really, yeah, it, 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 it was striking. So I thought, why not join also, you know, instead of going always further east, perhaps this subcontinent could help us out in Europe because we don't have enough, um, enough developing power right now. But actually, this is where the Baltics and the Balkans and the entire Eastern European countries um, come into force. And that's where we need to integrate them instead of going further. So I changed my opinion a bit. And then there is, um, there is this impact that we all seek, right, by being together. And this is the era of, stru of structuration. We have this professional structuration of our industry right now, um, like all the clusters and, and, and hubs and um, networks and associations that are sprouting everywhere. Here I name a few. If you know of others, please, you know, um, let me know. And also, the professional structuration makes for bigger um, exchange platforms, like the Eurofest XR, which is a really strong... Ex well, it's, 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 a, it's a strong market to promote the artwork and experiences that are going throughout this festival and market, um, 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 you know, program in, 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 in Europe. So there is always, you know, it starts now with Sundance again, but in Europe we have our own route of an agenda of uh, festivals and markets. And I think by promoting our own artwork, then we can also have a stance on the world stage. So, the idea is to strengthen co collaboration, as I said, and um, not only bring together competencies and know-how and talents at large, but it's to have these unfragmented, united fronts, and also to create, perhaps, aligned with what the Nobel Prize recognized in Europe, a very strong trade ethos in our industry, because we can do it. We're the perfect size and the perfect market to be able to do it. And don't forget, EU is the largest trade bloc in the world. So we do have also the, the mass impact. We don't think of it, but we do have it. And setting up standards in the industry, it's, it's, it's a, reflex, a reflection we, we all have, actually, and it's been part of a lot of um, talks and, and tech transfer projects and programs, we will go back to it. So, in Europe, we do have these wonderful events where we can exchange and, and mutualize. Um, there are probably more. Here are the festivals that are also listed. 
the GIF being the Geneva International Film Festival, which just ended on this past Sunday. I was there and it was, um, I, I just talked about it before. But there is this other side that is Horizon Europe and the research and innovation part that we are really the only ones in the world to have such a massive budget for innovation. It's an almost 100 billions for the upcoming six years. And, um, okay, I, I shouldn't be talking about uh, being part of the European Union because we just kicked out of the bilateral discussions and so we cannot be the leading house in such consortiums, like, uh, you know, the research consortiums. But, for example, at XR for Europe, we applied, uh, we built, I think, Santeri, you tell me if I'm mistaken, but we are part of three consortiums and applied for three of the 12 or 15 calls dedicated to XR that amount altogether to 25 billion, I think, something like that. So it, it's really the, the EU wants to make a stance. Here are the three um, main... Yeah, it's, it's, it's not that, uh, Lisa, yeah, readable. Innovation for media, including extended reality, extended reality modeling, extended reality for all in haptics. So that's uh, a part of it. So this is the tech transfer that we can also leverage upon because we have those wonderful public academic institutions that we can put together and, and, and create emulation within each country. And by, by also showcasing what are local talents. And for example, Metropolia, I'm, I'm super thrilled to see this wonderful, immersive, um, this, this, this tech center here. I mean, there should be more. In Switzerland, we're still, you know, ah, it's difficult right now. I'm working on, a, on consulting um, the... Um, the, technological, the Technology Institute of, of Lausanne, with its, um, um, it's, it's called DLL, Discovery Learning Lab, but each school is slowly also acquiring a, an immersive space of some sort. So altogether, what we are and what we stand for in, as when we talk of the XR industry, we're actually part of the creative industries. The creative industries is a broader word. It actually encompasses 13 different um, creative, you know, it, it's, it's 13 different um, economic activities. And um, it comes from Nomenclature Statistique des Activités Économiques dans la Communauté Européenne. Yeah, I can showcase my French. And Statistical Classification of Economic Activities in the European Community. I didn't know it was called NACE because we called NOGA. So um, what it says, though, is that we should mutualize, go transversal, because we, the XR industry, we are totally horizontal across all these creative industries. And this includes AEC, this includes manufacturing, tourism, culture and heritage, museology, that is part of it as well, entertainment, arts, gaming, software development, healthcare and well-being, education, training, all this is part of what we do and where we can really shine. The challenge is ahead as we always speak about, is the distribution. For example, somebody doing an, an, an art piece in XR or an immersive experience, the distributing of this piece is difficult because festivals require money. They don't, you know, it's not monetized to be at a festival. It costs time and money, and sometimes applications also cost money. Like for the, I learned this year, and I was a bit shocked, but the, um, the Venice ex extended the, the, the festival to apply, it costs 240 euros already. So it, it is not in favor of young artists and um, talents. So there is also the production. For now, production is mainly... There are, there are 
up and coming, I would say, um, XR production companies, but mostly it's the traditional broadcasting companies that are taking over and putting themselves also in, 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 in co-production modes. But often they don't really know about the, this new media. Um, and the, the biz, well, I, I'll go back. The biz models are different than for traditional, um, for traditional industries because it evolves so fast, as we've seen with the headsets. Like this year, there are so many headsets coming, coming on the market, and um, this this makes it not possible to go to a venture capitalist and say, oh, here is my one, three, five uh, years vision, because it makes no sense to be five years ahead. But when you speak to an investor, they still think in this mid-term and long-term kind, of, um, uh, kind of steps. And then there is this big discussion about GAFAM, of course, you know, about being protective of GAFAM on our, um, on our committee. We have, we have somebody strongly against the GAFAM because Meta is taking away 10,000 jobs in Europe. But it's also an opportunity to embrace what they know, to embrace their, um, the, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, Google, Apple, Facebook. Yeah, it's changed. It's it's Gamam. It's Gamam. Sorry. I'm I'm, I'm yeah Meta, um, and then Amazon and Microsoft. Yeah, I, I I didn't think of that actually Gamam. So yeah, um, and they, they they're our worst fear also because of the data. Um, of course, the, the because data. Is, is shifting to their servers sometimes. Like in Switzerland, we have this case where the Confederation signed a 120 billion contract with IBM, Oracle, and Amazon. And so this is why we um, created this uh, Swiss Data Sovereignty Initiative, because actually it means that the Americans, if they have at one point uh, a doubt about whatever is going on in Switzerland, like they had with the banks, quite arguably, you know, that yeah, yeah, we won't go into that, but, you know, well, if they had a different un- um, unjustified doubt about what's going on, they could actually come and um, request all the data. And so this is a bit of a this, this is a, a bit of a problem. And then on the job front, if we really want to counter, you know, massive job hires by the GAMAM, then what we need is better. Um, be better programs, academic programs, and have more of this and have more students. But then it's a bit, right now we're in a loop, like students don't, get, don't go into immersive or the XR um, engineering or, you know, multimedia courses because they think there is no job at the end. But then if GAMAM is coming, then suddenly there is jobs and then perhaps it will also help more students choose those academic paths. So yeah, it's a bit um, chicken and egg problem here. So solutions, because we like solutions. On the distribution and production front, for example, Atlas V, which is a very, a, a very well-respected and uh, um, well, they have, they have gotten awards um, uh, for their experiences. So they launched their own distribution uh, company called Astra, and I thought that was a... Uh, I was like, damn, they did it, good, you know? Because that's exactly what we need now, to be structured in a professional way, not only by clusters, but also, you know, to have the, uh, the own production, the own distribution, and finally to be... We're almost there, but to be recognized as one segment of the film industry. And for the GAMAM to collaborate with local startups and SMEs, because in Switzerland, just like here, we do have a strong presence of Microsoft, we do have Meta, we do have Google, 
And um, we have Logitech, but Logitech doesn't, you know, they, it's, a, it's a Swiss company at, at heart, but they, they don't do any gear. What they do is, a, is a, an immersive um, pen that, that you can use in the headset that is connected. For now, that's what they do. But um, so I would, uh, what Google and Meta and Microsoft are doing in the immersive section, they are partnering with the public universities. They are not really hiring tons of engineers because it's difficult to find the developers as well, but they're mostly there to hire the, um, the brain power from the universities and to collaborate with them. So I think to go further, they should perhaps help um, jumpstart some startups and some ventures and give them a good, um, you know, good funding help and then, and not only acquire them, because that's what we've seen as well. In Switzerland at least, and in Europe, um, uh, yeah, the, I, I, I can speak for Europe, major companies, they have their own XR um, task force in-house. Once they are big enough, they don't use smaller agencies or startups, they just hire. And so we can, we can you know, um, be a bit mad at the gamam, but actually that's the growth of a company. That's just uh, the regular path. So we should come with counter proposals, perhaps in hardware and software. And um, this is what Vario is doing, obviously very successfully. Why not a second one, a challenger? Perhaps it's going to be Lynx. And software, software is the power as well. So with all the help from, we have from this Eastern countries, we could really have super duper software developments because right now, again, we're mostly relying on ad space, on um, other, you know, very well known East Coast, but not or European East Coast um, softwares. So, but it's, it's great because, yes, yes, I know, we're overdue, we're totally overdue. I'm sorry, so I'm happy to answer comments and.